We are live and I couldn't be more thrilled to have Greg Raposo here with me on Merrill Talks Pop. Welcome, Greg. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you and I, I can't believe we are talking finally. So nice to meet you. Oh, uh, so tell us, Greg, where are you right now? Uh, right now I'm in my home studio uh, down in the basement of my house, my little man cave. And um, I'm actually hanging out with my buddy Ed. Uh, we uh, we meet here a couple times, well, once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, and he's my co-write. We've been writing music now for four years. Um, and if you check out any of the new stuff that I'm releasing, um, there's a good chance I've written it with this. Yeah. We will we, we'll definitely be talking about your... Uh, pro your projects from right now, but I bet all of our followers here um, are very excited to talk about Dream Street, uh, one of the biggest bands from the early 2000s. Uh, you guys could have been the next Backstreet Boys. I, I have always think about that and, and, and always say why they didn't release more music. So uh, before we jump into all of those questions, please tell us how was your experience in Dream Street? Um, it was fantastic. Um, you know, it was really only a couple of years and it's, it's funny how those, those two years are still so, um, you know, meaningful and, and 20 years later, we're still talking about it. Um, so that definitely means something. And it was, you know, one of the, one of the greatest couple of years of my life. So, um, you know, just something that I, I treasure dearly. And how was the uh, audition process? The audition for Dream Street? Yes. Uh, it was cool. So Dream Street was originally supposed to be a Broadway show. Uh, okay. So when we were all auditioning, we were auditioning for a Broadway show as far as we knew. Didn't even really know it was a boy band. Um, I don't think they knew it was going to be a boy band. Um, and to be honest, uh, me and Chris, and there was three other guys uh, were originally cast into a group that was called Boy Wonder. And then after a, a year of working together, they decided to recast three members, keep Chris and I, and have us re-audition, you know, pretend to re-audition for Dream Street. Um, so to be honest, my audition for Dream Street actually was fake. I was oh. already in the group. I, okay. I knew that I was already a member. Um, and I don't think any of the other guys knew that. That was kind of a secret. Um, but Chris and I had already been working the project for a year at the time. So we okay. were we were kind of like undercover, um, you know, undercover auditioneers. And... Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a really good time. And this was back in 1999? Yeah, probably. Something like that. Whoa. Can you believe it's been that long? Um, yeah, I can. I mean, there's there's been, uh, there's been a lot that's happened since then. Um, but time definitely is flying for sure. Uh, it doesn't feel like 20 years. Um, but... You know, here we are. You haven't aged a bit, and I bet <laughs> all of my followers are, agree with that because here people is saying that you look amazing and people is oh, great, thank great you to see you. So thank yeah. you so much. It's very, so, very kind. And uh, here, Lucas is asking: Boy Wonder recorded any songs? Yeah, uh, we did. Tell you what, um, my mom was recently moving. Um, and we were helping her unpack a whole bunch of boxes. This was just like last weekend. Um, and I was, I like stumbled across some really, really classic stuff. Um, in particular, I found like a Boy Wonder uh, program um, that, I don't this probably it's not in that box, right? I, I've got it somewhere lying around. So one of these days I'll have to, uh, I'll have to show you guys, right? Not in there. It would be great to see some of those uh, weird yeah, I've recordings. Some, I've some <laughs> really serious old school memorabilia and stuff that I've recently discovered. Um, so it was 
a lot of fun walking down memory lane and pulling out a bunch of old pictures and and uh, having all those memories flood back in. Um, so yeah, one of these days I gotta put some together to share for you guys. Yes, please do. I mean, I, we would love that. And now coming back to Dream Street, uh, what was your favorite song from Dream Street? Uh, I say yeah. Ha, that's my favorite too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just because it was probably like the heaviest uh, with, with guitars, and I was always into you know rock music and guitars, and so I think that song was probably the closest to something that I'd be listening to on my own anyway. Um, and, and we had like a fun dance, and we got to wear the, the sunglasses for that song, so I always just had fun with that one, and probably also feel the rain. Yes, that one's great. I was actually working out today with your CD, well, your music from Spotify, just to remember all the lyrics and be uh, like fresh by asking you all these questions. And I was like, this album is really, really cool. I, I, I mean, you guys should have released more albums. What happened there? Um, you know, so that is a question that I'm pretty sure you will get a different answer from depending on who you ask. Um, a lot of different perspectives and, and probably a lot of different truths as well. Um, for me personally, and probably for the other uh, four guys, three guys, um, we were kids and we were just having fun, doing our thing, and we really had nothing to do with anything behind the scenes in terms of contracts and lawyers and money. And I mean, all of that stuff was not, you know, anywhere in our like life. Um, we were just singing, we were just having fun. We were hanging out, we were hooking up with girls. We were just, you know, being kids, being teenagers. Um, so I couldn't really, tell you exactly what went down and how it went down mainly because i really had nothing to do with it um but you know it it you know it, it was a, a misunder a, not a misunderstanding but a, a misalignment between the producers and the parents and they weren't seeing eye to eye on things and they couldn't compromise and you know it ended up being the downfall of the group. Yeah, that's a shame. I mean, it happens sometimes when the members are like so young. Uh, you guys have nothing to do with all the disbandment. It's all like background, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and to be honest, even when it was happening, we didn't really think much of it. I don't think we believed it was really happening or like we were really gonna, it was really not gonna work out. Everything just seemed to be working out so well and perfectly. It's like we had the world at our fingertips. Um, so it was definitely almost shocking in a way um, when it like really happened that we broke up and there wasn't going to be another show. Um, but in the same token, at that point in time, I had also started uh, performing some of you know music I had written on my own and I was mm -hmm. um, practicing with a band of my age. Um, and really doing what I've always wanted to do. Um, so, but when you, I was still when, very, yes. uh, I think that, oh, I lost you for a second. Um, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Just, I think that connection was a little down. Um, now, um, I have here. Yes, your debut album, which I yeah. love. Yes, I um, I bought this in Las Vegas like four years, three years ago at the city store because it wasn't sold here in Mexico. But I was there and saw it and I'm like, I have to have this because I don't have Dream Street's album. Can you believe that? But I do have this one. So I love it. I mean, it's a, it's a great album. I mean, Take Me Back Home, it's like one of my favorite songs from a boy singer you know like in the i what uh 
what happened with, with this album? Uh, how was the writing process? Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, I mean, so I've been playing guitar and writing music uh, since I was like six. Um, so I had always been writing music. It was It's always just something that's come naturally to me. Um, so to be able to take songs that I've written on napkins and on nightstands and, and, you know, have them come out of recording studio speakers and played by professional musicians was a total dream come true for me. Um, I got to work with a really awesome uh, producer, Dave Margolis on that album. And we recorded at a, at a really top notch recording studio in Brooklyn called Mission Sound. Um, and it was just a, an awesome, awesome experience. A very different than Dream Street um, in the sense that, you know, I, Dream, like it happens every time, was written by the same uh, hit songwriter who wrote uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time uh, by Britney Spears. Um, okay. You know, so we were, we were almost more of like employees to a company um, opposed to being artists, uh, creatively, cre you know, making our own content and, and use, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It still was a great time and I loved every second of it, but, um, I've always related, um, uh, more to being a musician and being an artist and being a songwriter. And so when I got to really start diving into that, it just felt more like home for me and, and where I've always, you know, how I've always identified and wanted to be. And, and like I was really chasing after the dreams I've always dreamt. Um, you know, to be honest, I never dreamed I'd be in a boy band. I never took dance classes. It was never, you know, something that I came up with on my own. It was something I, I fell into. Um, but writing music, having a band, uh, playing my guitar, rocking out on stage. I mean, literally since I can remember, that's been like, you know, you know, my life, my dreams. So very and different in that sense. Your genre is definitely rock music. And I can tell because this album is definitely rock. It has some pop music, but it's like more rock, you know, like... The, the main thing is rock and your other albums and EPs you have on, on Spotify that I have been able to listen to have all these rock vibes. So Dream Street was completely pop. Uh, were you yeah. expecting when you were in Dream Street that if you guys recorded a second album or so, would it be like rock or would you guys stay in the same pop direction? So kind of like I was saying before, I, I would have had no real determination on that mm -hmm. um, we didn't pick the songs we were given the songs uh, the producers mm -hmm. are the ones who would speak with different songwriters and pick out which songs we're gonna sing I mean even uh, who sings what parts I mean even the harmonies were were given to us so that wouldn't even I don't even think that would have been something that would have been up to me um, if it was then yeah of course it would have it would have sounded probably a lot closer to to my solo album, you know, with cars and and been more rock and roll. Um, but you know, should also say that pop music is a very big part of me as well. And so anything that I do um, always always has elements of pop in it. Um, obviously, I've I've done my pop rock. I've done pop like dance music, um, and now what Ed and I are working pop country vibe. Um, so pop pop is definitely a constant. Um, guitars and elements of rock, um, I think, I don't think will ever escape me. Um, and then everything else, it's like just riding the wave and, and, and uh, going where the wind blows. So you are now working on new music and we hear a future Greg Raposo album or what's in the yeah. plans? Yeah, yes. actually, uh, we've already recorded it. I have it sitting in the in the uh, in the files, waiting to be released. Um, oh, okay. When did, when did we record the June? In June. June. So yeah, we we recorded six brand new songs, 
Um, previous to that, we had recorded seven songs and we released them um, on Spotify as City Country, which was the name of the project that Ed and I started, which you okay. can go on Spotify right now and listen to. Um, okay. Uh, and, you know, Ed and I have, have written over a hundred original songs at this point. Um, but we very specifically wanted to pick the songs that were maybe a little less country and more pop that would, you know, work for a Greg Raposo album. Um, okay. so this, you know, this last trip that we went down to Nashville in June, we recorded these six songs specifically to be released, not as city country, but as myself, um, being the solo artist that I've been, um, and you know, we're, I don't think we're going to release it all at once. We're probably going to just start dropping songs individually. Um, we're working on making music videos, uh, to accompany each song. And it's, uh, some really, really cool stuff that I'm very excited about sharing with everybody. That's awesome. We, we can't wait to hear that. I mean, guys, if you are listening here, reading this, uh, whatever, um, Please check out Greg's uh, social media so you can be like close to whatever it is he's doing. And we can wait mm -hmm. uh, for his new music to drop out soon. And now we have here questions that say, um, how close are you to the other guys of Dream Street? Uh, well, Frankie and Matt stayed in New York. So mm -hmm. we are all New Yorkers still. Um, Chris and Jesse moved to LA. Um, mm -hmm. so they became West coasters and that happened pretty much when we broke up so 20, 20 some odd years ago. Um, so considering we are on opposite ends of the country, um, you know, we didn't stay in touch as, as much, but, you know, we do have our little dream street group chat that we like to, uh, mess around with each other in here and there. Um, Actually, I think I, I have plans with Frankie and Matt in a couple of weeks or next, I think in November, they're coming by to uh, hang out. So, you know, we, we, we stay in touch. I mean, these days we're all working adults and, you know, parents and whatnot. So it's, it's not as easy to hang out as often as we'd like to, but, you know, we're in mm -hmm. touch for sure. And when you hear, hear, heard, I'm sorry, about Chris passing away, where were you? What went through your mind? I mean, I, I know for sure that it was shocking for all of us fans, but for you that you were a friend of him, how did you feel in the moment? I was very hard to understand and believe. I was at work um, and one of our, one of my best friends and, and Chris's very good friends uh, called me. It was like probably seven or eight in the morning and I was in the car and uh, yeah, it was just like uh, one of those things where you don't, you can't, you can't totally wrap your mind around it at first. Um, and then as time went on, it became a little bit more real and uh, was, you know, a pretty, you know, serious and uh, very sad experience. When was the last time last time you saw Chris? I hadn't. I was I, the last time I saw him in person was actually on my way back on my honeymoon, um, and so we just had our seven year anniversary. So it okay. was probably like six years prior, um, but I had spoken to him on the phone. Um, because I had heard from a mutual friend that he was going to be in New York and I was busting his chops about, you know, not letting me know and, you know, and having to make plans to come over and meet the kids. And um, he was really happy and excited that uh, we were making those plans. So we did have that nice last uh, communication. Um, and it was, you know, that much more said that we didn't get to follow through with it. And would you guys consider making a, a reunion, a Dream Street reunion? Um, I mean, when the news, when we all found out, um, I, 
uh, the, like a couple months prior, I do an annual birthday show. Um, and that year with COVID and everything, uh, we mm -hmm. ended up making a uh, digital uh, virtual concert. Um, and it, in that virtual concert, I had done an acoustic version of It Happens Every Time that um, a lot of people were really into and they were asking me to record um, and, and you know share with them, which I had told a handful of people that I would. Um, so it was on my to-do list. I was actually planning on recording that um, already. Um, so when Chris passed, um, you know, it was a very helpless feeling because um, it's like, what, do you, what can you really do? Um, mm -hmm. So for me, it kind of really prioritized um, recording that acoustic uh, track even just for like my own therapeutic purposes um, mm -hmm. and so I had done that and then I forwarded it to the other guys um, more so out of courtesy I, I don't think I was necessarily expecting it to turn into like a Dream Street reunion mm -hmm. tribute video um, mm -hmm. to be honest I, I didn't even ask without even asking they were all like we're doing this with you um, and had recorded their own parts from their phones or from, you know, wherever and sent it to me. Um, and I was able, you know, I used a friend to, to mix it. Um, and then Frankie actually is the one who did the uh, video editing, um, mm -hmm. you know, the video. And, you know, Chris and I have known each other since we were 11. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a lot of very close friends who were, you know, around since we were 11 so mm -hmm. uh, you know we all we made like a google drive and everybody was dropping their videos and pictures into it um which is where we got a lot of the footage to make that video um and you know so so that's that's how that happened really um i actually did write a uh, an original for as a tribute to Chris, um, which okay. I also recorded back in June. It's, it's one of the tracks that okay. um, I'll be releasing. I'm thinking maybe maybe uh, on the second year anniversary of his passing, so, so next summer. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably you know bring it up to the other guys without necessarily expecting much. But if they want to sing on it, they're more than welcome to. And if they don't, that's fine as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, but as for like a reunion, I mean, at this point, um, to be honest, I'm personally extremely busy, uh, even just as a dad and as a, as a self-employed full-time working dude. Um, I, I don't think it'd be something that I would really even have the time for at this point. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I would love, you know, if it was like a one-off or if it was, you know, a video or if it was, you know, something that could be done in a weekend, then of course, I mean, I would, I would love to do something like that. But in terms of a reunion, like, you know, how the Backstreet Boys have a Vegas, uh, residency or you've seen, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of groups going back on tour and getting back together. Um, you know, I wouldn't want anybody holding their breath, uh, for something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm always open for, you know, hanging out and having fun and, and doing something as, uh, as well as, as my time allows me to. Well, you never know what can happen in the future. So never say never. And here people's like, Oh, no reunion. Well, as, you as never know. <laughs> I'm never sorry? say never. Never say never. Yes, never say never. So, uh, what was like one of the of the fun? Uh, tell us a fun memory of you guys on tour. Uh, you guys toured with other um, pop bands like Third Phase, if I don't recall. Yeah, if I mm -hmm. yeah. yes, uh, yeah. I actually uh, yeah, interview really one in, interview one of them like a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Lindsay Pagano, who is actually also a friend mm -hmm. of mine, and. Uh, you toured with other guys. Jump Five? Did you guys tour with Jump Five? Yeah, 
Yeah, we did. Oh, wow. Actually, they just hit me yeah. up not too long ago because they did a really cool 20th year anniversary uh, documentary. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a little late, mm -hmm. but they asked me to send them like a little video clip, you know, congratulating them and saying hi. Um, so I was, you know, more than happy to do that. And then from doing that, um, a, a few of them like reached out to me and like just on like DMs and stuff. So it was kind of cool to have a quick little catch up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is crazy that it's like 20 years ago. Um, you know, like I have, I have a cousin, for example, who is 18 and she's like a total adult. We hang out. Um, and like, you know, she's, she's mature for her age and I'm, and I'm, I'm probably immature for my age. So we're pretty much like <laughs> here and it just blows my mind that she wasn't even alive, um, when dream street was a thing. Um, so that for me is like a real time, uh, indicator <laughs> of like, there are full blown adults who, uh, you know, weren't even around since Dream Street that are that I can hang out with now and have, uh, you know, deep conversations with. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, pretty serious. It's, it's unbelievable. And did they tour with Play? Chris was one of the in Chris was on one of their tracks. Yes, you you toured with uh, Play, right? Mm -hmm. We so did to, done some shows with Play. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got to meet a lot of other artists. We did a full on tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Oh, and what was like one of the funniest memories you have of being on tour? Um, on tour with Dream Street or just on tour generally? Uh, well, with Dream Street because um, people here wants to know. <laughs> Sure. Um, funny tour memory with Dream Street. We used to mess around with uh, Aaron, Aaron Carter a bunch. Got some funny memories there. Um, let's see if I got anything specific for you. Oh, I mean, we ha so on uh, on on one of the Aaron tours, we got this awesome um, tour van. And I remember laying in my little uh, bed bunk on the tour van and finding a note that was like hidden underneath the bed. And when I pulled it out, it was like a fan note to JC from NSYNC, um, mm -hmm. which we didn't realize, but the tour van that we were using had previously been used by NSYNC on uh, their last tour. Um, so that was pretty cool because we were all, you know, sync fans and we looked up to them um, as, you know, a, uh, a asper as a, an aspiration to where we could hopefully be one day. Um, I mean, another great example is uh, we, we opened up for Britney Spears in Florida. We were doing our vocal warm ups in the bathroom because of the acoustics and mm -hmm. uh, somebody's banging on the door and we figured it was like one of our parents trying to bother us. We were yelling like, leave us alone. We're, we're getting our vocals warmed up. And the, <laughs> they just keep banging, keep banging. Um, I, I think it was actually Chris who like opened the door all aggressively to be like, Hey, like, what are you doing? Can we, can we finish warming up? Um, and it was just like um, at the door and just wanting to like, let us know that we sounded great. And we were all just like, you know, um and that was that was a cool moment we got to take a picture with him and uh, you know he gave us some pointers um so a little a lot of little things if i you know really sat here and thought about it i could come up with more um but yeah it was you know it was a really quick two years um but obviously very impactful um and it's just very cool that you know 20 years later i still get these interview requests and people still have questions and they want to know about it um, and I love that and I'm, I'm very happy to uh, do these interviews and to answer these questions um, and to you know 
walk back down memory lane. So it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, Rick. It it is really a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Dream Street, but even though your music didn't make it here in Mexico, um, I was able to listen to your music. Don't ask me how. Probably some illegal <laughs> ways to get the music. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> until years later that I was able to get uh, get it legally like this. Um, right. But uh, it's actually great to talk to you guys and remember all those great times. And I was actually going to ask you, um, well, to tell me uh, just in one word, how would you describe each one of your Dream Street uh, fellow members? Uh, for example, Chris, what word would you give him? Um, okay, one word for Chris would be um whew. uh chris it's tough to do in one word chris uh was what's the word for not shy outgoing 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 I guess. yes outgoing but okay. i could well well if you want to say something Fearless. more Okay, fearless. fearless. Okay. 100% that's the word. And yeah, what about uh, word uh, Chris. one word fearless? And for Frankie. For Frankie, uh, probably genuine. He was Matt? always, he was always mm -hmm. just very, very genuine. Um, mm -hmm. Matt, I would say. Know, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm trying to choose between like, 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 like funny, um, like, like humor, or um, yeah. I mean, Matt, Matt, Matt had a way of being incredibly sarcastic without anybody knowing. Um, <laughs> And because we knew him so well, it was just so funny. Like, it just was the best. Like, he would say the most ridiculous things to people with this straight face. And they would, like, never know, like, where it was coming from or if he was being serious or not. And we all knew, you know, that he was joshing. Um, and so, yeah, probably something like like something with humor, um, lighthearted you know, good time, fun, you know, somewhere in that, in that category. And what about Jesse? Jesse? Yes. Jesse, I would say, so he was, he was the youngest of, of the group. Um, and even though he was only two years younger than us, you know, when you're 13 to 15, those, those two years are a bigger difference than, you know, 32 to 34, let's say. Um, so he was, he, you know, he kind of always felt like he was like a little brother. Um, so I always, I always, you know, loved him like a little brother and like the little brother I never had. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe a little brother. <laughs> and how words. do you think the, other, how do you think the others would describe you? What word do you think they would give to you? Uh, maybe crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay. So you all guys have like a bit of everything. That's that's what I like about boy bands because there's like a personality for each one of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was definitely the uh, um, probably the most off the wall. Um, but that's cool. I'm all about it. Okay. Still off no, well, the walls. We have to hear some other comments from the fans watching. Uh, Lucas says, thanks for bringing Greg to the channel. You know, I wanted to be a dream street so badly as a kid. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> he, he told me that he he pretended to be a dream street member when he was 11. Now we are 31. Can you believe that? Or two? <laughs> and uh, I awesome. used to pretend I was dating Chris. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, 
Uh, let's see what other questions. I mean, I wish I could tell you all the questions, but um, yeah, will the acoustic? Do have to, I have to get running because I have a songwriting mm -hmm. session, and Ed, Ed's yes. here waiting for me. Um, but if you guys want to send me questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and also, if you want to message me your mailing address, I will uh, send you something original from Dream Street since you mentioned you don't have an album. Um, so I might be able to find something for you. I'd be happy to, to ship out there for you. Oh, that would be amazing. I will definitely send you my address. That would be awesome. I mean, a fan my from plan. Mexico. I mean, you have here people from Brazil, from Colombia. I don't know where you guys are uh, writing, uh, all of you guys. Uh, but thank you, uh, Greg, once again, for sharing this time with me. It's been a pleasure talking to you and remembering all those great times with Dream Street and knowing that you're still working on music. Uh, so we can wait to hear what's next from you. Thank you guys so much. Yes, keep an eye out. More stuff to come soon. Okay. Well, take care, Greg, and I will be talking to you soon. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.